Our theme for this Christmas season is a Christmas heart, and the PowerPoint is going to go up in just a moment. We are preparing for Christmas by participating in a four-week countdown. That's probably the best way to say it is a four-week countdown, because if I were to say Advent, many of you would say, what is that? Well, this four-week countdown is called Advent. And we started with five candles. You can see them in front of me, all unlit. A white candle in the middle, and that candle represents Jesus. We'll light it on Christmas Eve. It symbolizes Jesus, the light of the world. And then, of course, we see three purple candles and one pink candle. For last Sunday, we lit the first purple candle. That was four weeks away from Christmas. And so that was the first Advent. That's why it's a countdown, kind of like not a four, three, two, one, but a one, two, three, four. I guess a count up, we would say in our thoughts, the way we operate in our culture today. But we lit that first candle, and that first candle symbolized hope. Today we lit the second candle, and the second candle symbolizes peace. And then next Sunday we'll light the pink candle, and the pink candle symbolizes joy and then we light the fourth candle on the fourth Sunday the last Sunday before Christmas and that candle symbolizes love and and so this really is an ancient church tradition I've mentioned this before but I want to mention it again it's an ancient church tradition it goes all the way back to the fourth century and it's called Advent the church after Jesus' death and resurrection was looking forward, not backwards. And so they were looking forward to his coming. And so they were anticipating the return of Christ. And so that's what was happening at Christmas and what the Advent wreath is all about and the Advent season. So we're, the theme is a Christmas heart. And this Sunday we're looking at a Christmas heart brings peace. So let me ask you a question. Would you describe your world as peaceful? Is your world peaceful? I think we long for peace and we kind of are sad and struggle with the fact that there is a lack of peace in our lives. And it seems, especially at Christmas time, this is most noticeable, because at Christmas time there seems to be just so much stuff to do. And people are running in all different directions, and then sometimes there's conflict when there didn't need to be conflict, there's disappointments when there didn't need to be disappointments, and all kinds of other things. And then when we look at our world, not our world, but the world, we start looking past ourselves, what do we see? We see a world in conflict. The Ukraine. Conflict still rages on in the Ukraine. I mentioned about Israel. Israel is still, we could say, under siege, we could say. Sudan and that region, there's a lot of things happening there. Refugee camps are scattered around the world. Syria, you just name the country and you will find probably a refugee camp. Refugee camps are scattered around the world. Misplaced people, homeless people. There's anything but peace in our world. Let me ask you another question. How would you define peace? How would you define peace? Now, I'm not asking for some theological definition of peace. And, and Corey started us off this morning with the word shalom. And I'm not asking you for kind of what does shalom mean or our peace? What are all the threads attached to our world peace? No, I'm just asking you, how would you define peace? Maybe when I asked that question, maybe your mind went to... Uh, being somewhere out in the country, maybe a campground somewhere or something like this. Mountains, a creek, trees, a fire, just crackling. Maybe, maybe, that, maybe that's the picture that came in your mind. To someone else, 
The picture of peace might be the family together for an evening meal and fun. What does peace look like for you? Think about that for a moment. And then can you establish peace in your world? And I would say at times we have encountered that, but I don't think we can establish it. But we've encountered that peace. We all know those moments. Sitting beside the campfire, where the family was over for that big meal and everybody's now fed up, we could say, and things are quiet. Kids are playing, it's all good. And we just kind of like sit back and it's beautiful. But can you establish it? No, it happens at times, but we can't establish it. How about peace in your inner being? Yeah, peace in your inner being. The words that you heard that hurt you, can they be put to rest? I think sometimes when everything gets quiet, our minds begin to work. And they rob us of peace. Because those words that were said maybe earlier that day or that week, they all of a sudden appear again. How about the actions that were done against you? Can the scars be removed? Or will the scars always be there and as you look at the scars, you remember the hurt and the peace is removed? As I think it was working towards this Sunday and thinking about the word peace, I realize it's easier to say than to put into practice or to actually have take place. Yet the promise is there. Given 2,000 years ago to shepherds to convey to the world. And so these words have been repeated for 2,000 years Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angels, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven. On earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. A heart of peace is found in who you are. I want you to think about that statement, but I think it's very true. The heart of peace is found in who you are. Are you the results of random chance? I don't think you'll find peace. If you believe you are the results of your culture or the home you grew up in, I don't think you'll find peace. But if you believe you are a creation of God, created for a purpose and loved deeply, I believe you will find peace in your inner soul, in the very depths of who you are. I believe that for peace, for true peace to be established in a person's life, they have to be reconciled with the one who created them. And as long as you are in rebellion to God, there cannot be peace. It doesn't matter how hard you try out here to spin the plates, If peace isn't deep down inside of you, there just won't be peace. Romans 8, 7 states it this way. I have it on the PowerPoint. You can read it. For the sinful nature is always hostile to God. It never did obey God's law, and it never will. So if there's conflict between you and your creator, there will never be peace. What we believe is so important. And that's why it's important for us to know truth. And to have peace, we need to know the word made flesh. We need to know the written word of God, and we need to live in step with the Word, the living Word and the written Word. 
So we go back to the Bible, and in the Bible we find Jesus given a title, Prince of Peace. In Isaiah 9, verse 6, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. It's really not so much a name as a description, really. But we'll look at it as a name. We find this title on Christmas cards, declared in Christmas carols, spoken in greetings at this time of the year. The title is interesting. Have you ever stopped to think about it? Prince of Peace. A prince one day becomes a king, doesn't he? Yeah. So a prince is still someone who's under authority. Jesus entered our world under the authority of God to establish peace. Jesus ushers in peace when he takes on the human form, restores the broken relationship between humanity and God. Positionally, you can be restored into right relationship with God, with the one who created you, But until the world we live in declares Jesus as king, we will find ourselves in a world that falls short of perfect peace. Two contradictory truths are clashing here. The truth of conflict, that is a part of our world. The part of your world. And you're not going to change that. It will change when Christ comes back. So conflict, but in the midst of conflict, there's the truth of peace, perfect peace. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ in your hearts. The two contradictory truths are clashing. Colossians 1, 19 to 22, Paul put it this way. He said, for God in all his fullness was pleased to live in Christ. And through him, God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. This includes you who were once far away from God. You were his enemies, separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions. Yet now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. As a result, he has brought you into his own presence. And you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. When you accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, positionally, you are at peace. Peace is in you. You stand before God without a single fault. Peace is present and future. The clash between the two truths. Jesus said to his disciples and all who believe in him, he said in John chapter 16, verse 33, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I've come, I have, I have overcome the world. The contradictory truths, peace and conflict, reigning together at the same time. And one day there will only be true, it will only be peace. So the peace that we find through faith in Jesus will help us to live in peace while the storms of life rage around us. That's why we desire peace so much. So we just want peace. So the question I need to ask you is, what is causing the disruption of peace in your heart today? What's causing the disruption of peace in your heart this Christmas? Do you feel separated from God? Sometimes I hear from people who love Jesus and they say to me, I feel separated from God. When I pray, it feels like my prayers are hitting the ceiling. I feel like I'm lost in darkness and he doesn't see me. 
Do you feel separated from God? Peace can be embraced by those who feel separated from God. There's two ways. One is make sure that you have embraced Jesus. Make sure that you've bridged the gap between God and yourself, and that can only be bridged through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, through his death and resurrection. But we need to realize it's more than a feeling. Okay? Positionally, if you've accepted Christ, you are made righteous. Peace dwells in you. The Holy Spirit lives in you. Sometimes we, we live in the world of feelings. But there are times when we want and need to move from feelings to fact. Our faith is based on a fact. And so when we walk through the desert, when we feel our prayers are hitting the ceiling, we need to remind ourselves of the fact. The fact is that we are loved by Jesus. He is there, even though we don't feel him. And Jesus says it so clearly. He says, I will never leave you or forsake you. Hebrews 13, 5. You might feel like you're separated from God. But if you've accepted Jesus, the fact is you are not. And walk in the fact, not in the feeling. Do you feel you are in crisis? Sometimes that's the way we feel. We feel like we're in crisis. And peace can be found in crisis. The disciples found themselves in a crisis. Jesus died and was buried. And the disciples... They found themselves in crisis. Our Lord and Savior is dead. What should we do? They were afraid. Sometimes that's a sign of being in crisis, fear. They felt lost. <coughs> they locked themselves up in a room. And many times we find ourselves in a crisis. Fear grabs us. We're confused and basically we feel lost, not knowing what we should do next. In a way, we lock ourselves up. We distance ourselves from people. We need to remind ourselves that Jesus is present. He has not left us or forsaken us. And if we follow his voice found in the scriptures, we'll find peace in the crisis. The disciples on the road to Emmaus, if you remember that in Luke chapter 24, they were walking to Emmaus. They were downcast. Two disciples, they were lost. They were in crisis. Jesus joins them. They don't know it's Jesus. But Jesus joins them. And it wasn't until Jesus broke the bread with them that they realized Jesus was with them. And they said, weren't our hearts burning? You see, Jesus was with them all the time. Jesus appeared to his disciples when they were locked up behind that closed door. And Jesus said, peace be with you. And if you're in crisis, Jesus wants to say, I'm here with you. Peace be with you. Back away from the crisis. Don't let it overwhelm you because I'm here with you. My strength, my presence, it's all okay. Do you feel... Or do you find yourself in conflict with work, friends, and family? Peace is also for those who find themselves in conflict. 
Jesus tells us very clearly that if we are walking with him, we will find ourselves in conflict. So don't be surprised if you find yourself in conflict. Because the values of Jesus are at odds with the values of our world. And the closer you walk with Jesus, the more conflict you will find. I want to remind you, though, of Jesus. He did not try to defend himself as he stood before the high priest, the Jewish leadership, or Pilate. And if you find yourself in conflict, make sure that that conflict is because you are walking with Jesus and not because you have allowed self or ego to be in control. You see, Jesus wasn't concerned because he knew he was in the Father's hand as long as he was doing the Father's will. So stay stay standing on truth and on righteousness. It might end up costing you, but remember what it costs God for you to be free from sin. Always remember the grace that Jesus extends to you. And when you're in conflict... Extend that same grace to those that you're in conflict with. And if you're in peace with God, then really the power of that conflict is gone because you know who you are and in whose hands you are. You know, when I think of the Christmas season, I think of those that find themselves alone. Those that find loneliness is robbing their peace. And I know that for some of you, it's a first Christmas. And I know for others of you, it might be the 10th or the 15th Christmas. But the loneliness is still just as real. Peace is there for those who are mourning. Many times we find ourselves struggling with loneliness. And this is the time of year where it really seems to be right there in front of us. It could be because a good friend has severed a relationship with us. It could be because a loved one died. Or it could be just that we are alone. When Christmas Day comes, we're there by ourselves. It could be that the kids have grown up and are gone and they're somewhere else. It could be just because you are single and alone. And this loneliness is hard. It's like a toothache in our heart. But I want to assure you again that you're not alone. Jesus is present with you. The body of Christ, the church is standing with you. And here comes that hope. We have a hope. Yeah. Christ is coming back. His rule and reign will be established. And I assure you, you will not be lonely. You are not lonely today, but you will not be lonely. The peace that we encounter today is not a perfect peace on the outside. Okay? And Jesus doesn't promise today a perfect peace on the outside. But he promises a perfect peace inside. And we can have that deep inner peace in all circumstances of life when we rest on the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. That peace is perfect peace. That's what Jesus tells us. The perfect peace that passes all understanding It is a peace that looks forward to the return of Christ because we were made for Christ. And when Christ returns, we are going to be where we are to be. We were created for. 
But till then, we have to live through the consequences of sin. And it's not just our sin that we live through the consequences of. Those around us, as they sin, we have to live through those consequences too. So peace does not mean the absence of conflict. It means working through the conflict with the Prince of Peace. But God has also called us to be peacemakers. And we can't be peacemakers until we know the Prince of Peace. Because peace is a person. Paul tells us in Ephesians 2, 14 to 16, he says, For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create himself one new humanity out of two, thus making peace, and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross by which he put, death, put to death their hostility. The Prince of Peace is Jesus. But till Jesus returns, we are given the mantle of peacemaker. Something we don't think of too often. We've been called to be peacemakers. Romans 14, verse 19. Let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. You're called to be a peacemaker. Hebrews 14, 12, 14. Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. We're called to be peacemakers for Jesus. And this calls us to this, this call is a call to live in hope. By ourselves, we cannot be peacemakers. We can only be peacemakers if Christ is in the center of our lives. And we will see glimmers of peace. And those around us will see those glimmers of peace. But ultimately, peace will be established when Christ returns. As peacemakers, what you do is you establish an expectancy for Jesus. Have you ever thought of that? When you live in peace... When you're in peace with Jesus, you know he's there. When you're in peace in a crisis, when you're in peace in a conflict, when you're at peace in loneliness, and the people around you sense that peace. I don't know, I've heard people say to me, I don't get it, but people ask me why I'm just so calm in situations. Have you been asked that? I know some of you have. You've told me that. People see the peace of Christ in our lives when we're living in that peace. And it catches their attention. And they want that peace. And you can become a peacemaker. So Colossians 3.15 says, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you are called to peace, and be thankful. So we're called to be peacemakers. If at this moment Christmas is looming before you and you feel anything but peace, I want to encourage you to step back and ask the question, why? Why do I feel this way? And then reflect on what I said. 
and move into peace with Jesus. And allow yourselves to be peacemakers. I'm going to ask the worship team to come to the front and they're going to lead us in singing. Today is the Savior's day. I'll end with that phrase that I started with at the beginning. A Christmas heart brings peace. We're doing a countdown towards Christmas. Hope was our first Sunday. This Sunday is peace. Let us be the people that God has called us to be.